to do the click. I got, first I'll tell you, every Monday morning, it's an addiction. I listen to it every Monday morning. I'll watch it depending, you know, I'm at work, so I'm listening. When did you say, hey, look, I'm just going to try to do a regular podcast. And more importantly, that uh, what I'm really impressed is you had a business plan to make money, right? Which a lot of people don't do, right? They just do this as a vanity project. What, what was the origins of this? Kevin and I first flirted with the idea of a podcast in 2018. And I still have the, the notes from when I uh, began to kind of lay out what it would be. The podcast market wasn't as crowded in 2018, so there was a little opportunity to um, kind of make a mark a little more easily maybe. But, but Kevin's so busy all the time, movies and stuff, and every time we were going to get going – He'd be like, he's like, I'm shooting something in England for five weeks. I'm like, well, that's going to put a damper on things. So, and then, you know, then two months would go by. I'd have a text at two in the morning, podcast, you and me, tomorrow we talk, you know, and then, and it wouldn't. So there was always something in the way. Now, unbeknownst to me, Tristan, his son, his late son, uh, had been championing this at home on, on his end. He was a big podcast fan, and and, uh, and so he was telling Kevin about it. And uh, Our work together on the Kayfabe Commentaries videos, people always, I mean, if you search the comments for the older You Shoots and Guest Booker and Timelines, people always talked about a chemistry between us that, that they wanted to see more of. And when podcasts became a thing, that's how they began to express it in terms of the podcast of a podcast. So Kevin, I think, just got tired of hearing it. So finally, uh, last year, um, it was actually it'll be two years, I guess February, when he called me. He was like, "It's now or never. You know, we got to do this." And I said, "Fine." I had. I knew that this is where it was going to go. The shoot interview is all but dead. It's uh, a lot of people do them over the over the camera like this, and uh, there's so much lost when you're not sitting in a room with someone, absorbing their energy. That there is something that happens between two people when they sit a few feet apart. And not to blow myself here, but I guess if there is, you know, we all have a superpower, right? Maybe we just haven't discovered it. But I guess what mine was, why kayfabe commentaries uh, got to be what it was, was a rapport. was an ability to sit down and engender trust pretty quickly and then go somewhere with a guest that maybe others hadn't or, or they didn't realize they were willing to go. So I said, well, if podcast is the way to go, it's going to be very different, and I have to see what it feels like. So I did a solo podcast called uh, Kayfabe, Stories You're Not Supposed to Hear. Um, still out there, available. I don't know, 40 episodes, whatever, like a year's worth. Um, and I would, I would talk a little bit myself, share my thoughts. Every show had a guest, from Ron Jeremy to... Um, uh, oh God! Uh, you know all the workers that uh, that I worked with in the past that I had good rapport with, had Lenny Poffo on and Brutus Beefcake, and um, so yeah, the podcast. I just wanted to see how it worked. So then, when Kevin reached out and we were going to do this finally, um, I knew the market a little better, and I knew that. Um, and if you know Kevin, um, you're the money's got to be right. So I knew whoever we went to, um, it, there had to be a structure in place where we were able to make what we deserved. We get now, I think, uh, I know it's over a million views a month on our YouTube channel. That goes for full shows, but also clips. You know, we chop up some stuff and which, by the way, I know the analytics. That's pretty solid money. That's that's good decent yeah. money, right? Yeah. And then uh, the, on the audio side, on the ad side, there's um, 
you know, we do about uh, 120,000 uh, audio listens uh, for four four weeks of uh, of new programming. We do once a week, so that's kind of where we land. Um, and those are numbers that we are comfortable with. Of course, we always think they could be higher. So that's always the, the quest. What do we do? We didn't want to do another wrestling podcast, Monty. That was the thing. Mm -hmm. There's there's so many. What are, what are we going to offer that's different? I mean, there's only so many stories about the click and about the NWO. So Kev's thing was always, even five years ago, when I said, Kev, I don't do anything unless it's different. I, I, I don't ever want to be doing something that someone else is doing. Uh, how are we going to handle this, the wrestling? He goes, it's two guys at the bar. I said, okay. He said, when two guys are having a good time at the bar, the guy next to them wants to slide over. And the guys at that other table want to come and sit up at the bar too. So if we could be two guys at the bar, like we are here when we go out to dinner or you know, when we're hanging out in between shoots, if we could be two guys at the bar, People are going to come sit with us. And that was that was the only philosophy. I mean, the show is planned somewhat. We talk about what we want to talk about. But we never have, you know, as, as you and Farrow probably did, you, you can't go over what exactly you're going to talk about because you want the spontaneity. Yeah, we, wrote, we write a script, uh, the, the bullet points, and sometimes it goes off the rails, right. and sometimes you kind of stick right. to the format, right? Right, because if you, I mean, if you guys have an argument, you want that to be there. Like when Kevin and I have disagreed, uh, our our engineer would be like, you, you guys want me to cut that? And we're like, no, that that's real. Yeah. That's two guys at the fucking bar. Right. So um, so there's no real magic. I guess that's the magic, I guess. it's. But let it's me ask you this, though. You mentioned about the money, right? You mm -hmm. Look, you're the leader, right? You're the guy who did this. I understand that Kevin's, you know, half of the show, but you're the guy is – is there pressure on you? Like, oh, man, if I don't make enough money on this each month, Kevin's going to say, well, I'm done. And all this hard work gets washed away. I mean, what kind of pressure is on you? Well, you know, I serve a few masters. The, the reality is, Monty, I, uh, that's a picture of one of them right there. I got, we got to keep it going uh, for the person f for whose name is on the show. Mm -hmm. Um a much deservedly bigger print than mine. Um, you know, I got a daughter in college. You know, I have a life and a lifestyle, two kids, uh, a lovely wife, and you have to keep things going. So there are plenty of days that I wish I was elsewhere, mm -hmm. like on Mars. And, um, you know, on any given day, I'll have Kevin on the phone and about ratings and then uh, Todd will be popping up here to, you know complaining about the publicity department at the publishing company and uh, then you know maybe uh, you know I'm working on a, a very exciting project with Sean Waltman and maybe we're working through something there so uh, there's a lot of air traffic control in my days and uh, keeping people optimistic keeping people realistic um, keeping people focused no tantrums allowed or have your tantrum and then okay we ready to talk about business about the next show or the next chapter um that's a big part of it and going back to my kayfabe days i never minded having a difficult talent as long as the show was good as long as the fan was going to get content that was compelling entertaining salable would make money uh, I'll shoulder a difficult talent I'll shoulder a tantrum um, that's part of my job but when the light goes on we, we got to do the thing and